There is two games left in the Premier League season, and we are up in 7th place. And there is a different colour between 7th place and 8th place. So I'm thinking, if we stay really quiet and don't do anything, and stay in 7th place, we might have Europa League football next season. But we are facing Manchester United in this episode, and we're going to cover both of the last two games of the season. Can we get the Europa League with Watford? It's time to find out. Hello guys and welcome back to the 6th episode of the Jurgen Klopp Challenge with Watford where today we are playing the last two games in the Premier League season to find out if we are going to be competing in the European competitions next year. It could be the Europa League 2 or the Europa League, I'm not actually completely sure but you know that colour makes me think that we could be in with a chance either way and we are facing Manchester United and Southampton in our last two games of the season. So the first one should be a very difficult one, and the second one, well, away from home, it could be a difficult one as well, but you'd hope that it would be a little bit more comfortable. Since last time out, we've actually done it pretty well, I'm not going to lie. Started off with an away win against Wolves, then a loss to Tottenham, which wasn't great considering the fact that we were all over them like a bad rash, and I've just realised how much I say that in these videos. Probably not the best phrase to be using, but oh well, I like it. <laughs> um... And then we managed to beat Norwich 5-0, where Mariano managed to get four, uh, not four goals, three goals, a hat-trick, so we don't mind that at all. Certainly we'll be thinking about activating his uh, option to buy, which is only $12.5 million. And then we got a one all draw away from home against West Ham, who are the team just below us. But with the game in hand on them, we could go even further ahead and guarantee that seventh place spot. But without any further ado... Let's jump straight into the first game of the episode, the second to last game of the entire season, and this is the team that we're going with for it. Saar has just gone back from injury. That was a lovely voice crack. I am so sorry about that, guys. Puberty, it's a lovely thing, isn't it? Uh, so we, this is the lineup that we're going with. Saar's still not quite fully fit. Got a couple of injuries here and there still, but at the end of the day, it's still a pretty solid uh, starting lineup. And we're going to go straight into it. Take a look at the Manchester United squad. I have a feeling it's going to be a tasty one. But they are playing a couple of youngsters. You know, Chong out on the right. Greenwood up top. Phil Jones, not a youngster, but not a good player either. So, you know, maybe we could be in with an outside chance of coming away. With all three points today, let's go out there and prove the media right by backing us and thinking that we can do well in this game. Come on, mate. Let's do it. Watford against Manchester United. I swear that Watford have beaten Manchester United, like, recently. Oh, no, I think they beat Arsenal. Oh, that's a little depressing, isn't it? Uh, no, I just feel like Watford's a bit of a bogey club for the big side, so hopefully we can materialise that uh, We myth that I've just come up with in this game. And uh, we had a good opportunity there, but Decore couldn't keep it on target, and it went well over the bar. But Decore... <laughs> Decore just stole Mariano's goal. Okay, I mean, I'm not complaining because he wasn't offside and it, a goal's a goal. But, mate, that that's going in. Like, that that is going in. Decore, you can't touch that. It's just, it's just not allowed. Oh, my goodness. If he was offside, I would have been furious. That There's no way that's not going in. Oh, my goodness. Deco to be fair, Decore needs the performances more than Mariano does. I already like Mariano. Decore, I'm a little on the fence about, so I don't blame him, to be completely honest with you. We're almost at halftime already, and we're only 1-0 up, but we have another opportunity coming our way. The goal scorer, Decore, plays it out to Delafeu, who was robbed of an assist, and eventually we get it in and around the right sort of area, but playback, don't mind that, as long as we're regrouping and making sure we keep a hold of the ball. I don't mind going back just a wee bit, but eventually we do play it forward, and Decore is trying to make up for stealing an assist from Delafeu by putting them in on goal. But you can't apply the finishing touch. And we have one more opportunity before the end of the half. Well, I'm assuming there's only going to be one more opportunity based off the clock time. And it is us on the ball. And didn't expect that. But I'm not complaining again. Playing it out on the left. Playing it back to the defenders. Come on, regrouping. Playing it all the way back to Dawson, who's our furthest back player apart from our goalkeeper. 
and now we're playing it all the way back to the goalkeeper. You guys know what that means. That means it is goal time for us. Cabasele moving it. For, oh, we, oh, wow. No, oh, wow. Okay. Ooh. Okay. It wasn't a goal. That's probably the first time I've ever not liked playing it back to the goalkeeper. And that's probably karma for thinking it's the best thing since sliced bread uh, for a bunch of my videos and creating a bit of a joke about it. I'm still going to keep that joke because I don't have a lot of jokes on my videos and, you know, I'll take what I can get, but that that really did shut me up quite quickly, didn't it? Juan Mount playing a ball in and Bruno can't quite get it underneath the bar, just like Decore couldn't earlier on in the game. And I think we're already going to be looking to make our first substitution in the form of Saar coming back on after his injury and playing him instead of Pereira, who isn't having a great day at the office. But overall, the team is having a pretty good day at the office. 1-0 against Manchester United. We look much more dominant. I don't think we've seen a single opportunity for them. Well, you know, we almost scored an own goal, but, you know, that wasn't them. Who actually played that pass back to him? It was absolutely shocking. But, I mean, as long as it didn't go into the back of the net, you can't really complain now, can't Well, you can't, actually. That was terrible defending. <laughs> You'd expect a professional footballer to be able to do a little bit better from that sort of region. But we have an opportunity here, and we're looking to double our lead. But Greenwood manages to get a tackle and don't play it back to the goalkeeper. Oh, thank goodness. I mean, next game, I'll be all for it. But just right now, feeling a little bit nervous about playing it back to the goalkeeper. Delafleu coming in with a massive hit. But it doesn't trouble the goalkeeper as it goes just what well, well, it did trouble. I mean, he did a big jump, but, you know, it went far and high. So I don't think he was ever too worried. Oh, no, he probably was a bit worried. I, I just, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Let's focus on the opportunity at hand. I swear, if Manchester United score here, it will ruin the entire vibe of this last game. Come on. Close him down. Make sure this is our opportunity. And yes, we do exactly that. And now we're breaking away. Out on the left. Look for the ball into the middle. I mean, not the ball that I was wanting, but, you know, we still have the ball, so we can't complain. Eventually, Mariano is in on goal. And uh, that's what I said. I wanted us to play back to Char Charleba there and uh, do exactly that. That's what I wanted. That's uh, it's all part of the game plan, guys. You know, just mind games, mind games. Great finish from Mariano. A great pass from Bruno. That puts him right in on goal. Maybe De Gea could have... Gotten a bit of a stronger glove, but again, we're not going to complain. If it benefits us, you know, it's a it's happy days. And Mariano gets yet again another goal in the league, and he is doing absolutely amazing since he coming in January. Easily the best signing that we made, and uh, I think we'll be looking to activate that option to buy. Hopefully, his wages aren't too high because I think currently we only play about half of it, so. Yeah, I was actually going to make a substitution, but I've just realised there's only a few more seconds to go, so we'll just play it out, you know, it's it's not a big deal. 2-0 against Manchester United, now that is actually a big deal. That is a brilliant performance from the side, and that puts us up in 7th place and secures us that spot. And if we are in the Europa League, it will stay, wouldn't it? Because there's no way we're going down to 8th. So it, it should say... We'll have to find out in the next game against Southampton. I mean, I, I mean, we could go up into sixth place technically, but you know, with Manchester United versus uh, Sheffield United at home, who are down in sixteenth place, I've, I'm pretty confident that we're going to be finishing seventh place, which is pretty good. You know, best of the rest can't complain. But we are going to jump straight into that next game, and hopefully Mariano can keep scoring even more goals. Let's actually take a look at him. Gosh, I love this man. Four-star current ability, stats that you dream of, man. He is brilliant, complete forward. Don't mind if I do. Nine goals, three assists in 14 games. Mate, you're insane. I love you. And we are only play paying, I think, 60% of his wage. No, only 50% of his wage. He's on 140k a week. Honestly, if he came at me and said, you need to pay 140, 120, I'd, I'd really consider it. I love this guy. For only $12.5 million, he could be a steal and a long-term striker because he's still only 26. But, you know, I'm I'm getting a little sidetracked. We need to jump straight into the next game if we want to have time to do all the season review stuff at the end of this episode. So let's go straight into the game against Southampton. And uh, hopefully we can move up into sixth place. It's possible. Don't take it away from me. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 
the first season of the Jurgen Klopp Challenge with Watford is coming to a close with this final game. And if we take a look at the stages, at the uh, rankings, we can see that Southampton really want to win this game because if they do, they could go above Newcastle. So they certainly won't be lying down without a fight. But we need to make sure that we're at our best on the last day of the season. And this is the squad that we're going with. Holobas and Saar come in with a new look left-hand side. Also, Ibe is on the bench because, you know, he's actually done quite well since he came here. He's got an average rating of 7.1, two goals, one assist, five games. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think it might have been a good signing. But we're going to jump straight into this game without any further ado. Get the season wrapped up and hopefully just maybe go above Manchester United. I know, I know. It's, not, it's probably not going to happen. I think we'd have to score about 10 goals to make it happen. And Manchester United would have to concede about... Seven, but it's physically possible, so I'm excited about it. Let's chuck on uh, where is it latest scores so that we can see what's going on everywhere else. Hopefully, we can get an early goal to settle some nerves, and hopefully, we can come away with all three points to end a pretty productive and a pretty good first season of the Jurgen Klopp Challenge. We have the first highlight after half an hour in the game, and it is looking like it's going Southampton's way. Yeah, definitely went Southampton's way. Che Adams comes in and nabs a goal very, very early on into the game. Well, not actually very early on. Half an hour, kind of early. That's a third of the way through. I'd consider that early. <laughs> a shot by their player gets deflected and uh, goes straight past our goalkeeper. So it's a little disappointing to concede in that sort of a way. But you know what? That's the way the cookie crumbled. And, uh, you know, it's uh, I guess it's nice for... Southampton because they, they could move out of the relegation zone but we really do need to do a lot better in the second half because we are the better side here on paper on the table on everything on my mind on your mind I don't know what I'm going on about now oh I said on again gosh I'm proud of that one that one wasn't even intended 60 minutes gone and I'm just rambling now aren't I well that's actually every single video if you guys have come here and you're like what's this guy rambling on about yeah, yeah, you clearly haven't been here for very long. That's kind of my thing, you know. It's You come for the football manager content, but you stay for the, the mindless rambling, I hope. Maybe. I don't know if that's true at all, but, you know, I feel like you guys can't hate it that much. Juan Mart coming in, and it looks like he has just won us a penalty. I don't know who's going to take it. I think it's going to be sad to step up to the plate, and he is going to be the man. Come on, he hasn't missed a penalty this season. And I didn't jinx it, thank goodness. <laughs> he puts it coolly into the back of the net. And it is back onto level terms. And we are very happy with that. I think a draw in this last game could be something that we could live with. A loss, I think, is a little bit disheartening to end the season. And we do have an injury to the goal scorer, Saar. And I've quickly realised I've put Jordan Ibe on the bench with about 68% condition. So... Don't think he's going to make an appearance. He's been playing for the reserves quite a bit to try and keep him match fit. But yeah, I probably should have thought that one through before I actually kept doing that. So we have one more opportunity. Well, it could be the last opportunity. Who knows? You know, a lot of stuff happens in this game. But it uh, goes their way and they put it into the back of the net. Every single opportunity we've seen in this game has led to a goal, I think. I could could be wrong. I don't recall seeing an opportunity that hasn't led to a goal. We'll go attacking for the last few minutes, as I said before. A, a loss in the last game. Yeah, it's not what we want. It shows a lack of character, and we're going to ask them to show some passion, do exactly what we need them to do, and score a goal in the last few minutes to put us back onto level terms, probably where we deserve to be. I think a draw is fair in this game. And, you know, they do have a lot to fight for, but I'd, I'd just like to do what... Oh, my goodness... Hoiberg just scored the goal of the season and well now it's slightly more respectable to lose to them because that was an absolute hit and a half. How good is Hoiberg? Maybe we could bring him in if they get relocated because I feel like that we'd get him for a cut price. What a hit. Is that going to save them? No, I don't think it is. Who are they playing? Who are Newcastle playing? I don't know. The game's over. Should have been more focused on that game but I mean... I'm not happy with the performance out there, but we do end the season. It's time to find out if we did get European football. Seventh place finish, 
six points away from Manchester United, one point away from West Ham, so actually quite tight near the end. Who were Newcastle facing? Oh, Leicester, away from home. You'd expect Leicester to do a bit better there, but I guess Newcastle had a lot to fight for. Burnley, Aston Villa and Southampton all going down. And it's time to find out if we do have that European football spot. And we do exactly that. Watford have qualified for the Euro Cup and we are going to be competing against the likes of Arsenal and Manchester United next year. Who else is in the tournament? Well, I don't think Arsenal are in the tournament, but we've got Tottenham, Manchester United, uh, and of course, all the other sides from around the world. And we've received $27 million for that. <sighs> I'd love to see what our budget's going to be. And we're going to simulate forward just a wee bit so that we can find that out very soon. Right now, we already have a little bit left in the old kit, eh? That's, you know, the word for box, I think. I don't know. Um, and we'll fly forward to see who has won. The uh, player of the season and all that kind of stuff and wrap up the season on a high note, hopefully, despite the fact that that last game, yeah, could, could have gone better. I did not have to simulate far to get those end of season awards and end of season wrap ups. And our player of the season, surprisingly, is Craig Dawson. I mean, I'm not going to act like I noticed him do a whole lot this year, but he must have done some great stuff in defence. And uh, I mean, fair enough then. Let's take a look at our best 11 and see if I agree with it. Mariano up top, yes. Saar, Delafo, yes, yes. Uh, Bruno, Decore, Capua, yes, yes, yes. Holbas, Cavicelli, Dawson, Juan Mart, and Foster. I agree with all of them. Foster, I can actually agree with as well. I'm kind of on the fence about that, but, you know, the goalkeeper that we've signed, he he's done all right, but he's not, you know, shone a huge light on himself, to be completely fair. Let's take a look at the goal of the season from Saar, because my laptop's actually quick these days, so I can actually afford to, you know, show you guys these, because it doesn't take half an hour to load like it used to with my old laptop. Gosh, you guys are probably so sick of hearing about my uh, my problems with laptops, but how, I'm sorry. I swear I've seen better goals than that just in today's episode. Like, that's a solid finish, but, yeah, I don't know if that's the goal of the season. Bruno's won the signing of the season. I'd say Mariano deserves that, and then Saar is the young player of the season. Mariano's top goal scorer. Dawson's a high, highest average rating. Best car... Pa, pa, oh, English. Come on. Let's go, Raxo. Best pass completion by Kapua, yes, there we go, we got it in the end. And uh, most assists by Delafleu, most man of the match awards equal with Delafleu and Mariano, but overall, a pretty good season. And let's take a look at the review. Uh, I'd say 7th place finish, I mean, yeah, we don't really care about the Cups, but I think that overall, I'd be very happy with that if I was the board. And we've done everything quite a wee while uh, before we were expected to, so I don't mind that at all. That is certainly something that I am happy about. So let's take a look at the new expectations for us. I don't want to have to... Uh, I don't know. What did it say? What did that say? Uh, I know I don't want it. No, I don't want to have to make the most of set pieces. Thank you very much. They want us to become recognised as the best of the rest. We, um, I mean, we are already, but they only want us to finish top half. All right, that's not the ambition that I want from this challenge. You know, we've got five years, man. Come on, I'm I'm not going to live forever. Uh, Euro Cup, they want us to reach the second knockout round minimum, so I think that's pretty fair. All pretty realistic. Come on, let's get rid of this. Please, please, please get rid of this. I, oh, they've given me the orange. Fine, but you just know I'm going to fail it. I'm sorry, but I'm, it's just not going to go well. End of season team meeting, I'd say that we can finish top half next season. I'm happy that they've all agreed with me. I didn't want to... Like, I actually want to get um, Europa League you know, top six next year quite comfortably, but I'm not going to tell them that. They're all going to be pretty unhappy about me being too ambitious and all that. But that is the end of the season. That is all we needed to take a look at, and that is where we're going to end the episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. We are going to just quickly take a look at who won the Footballer of the Year for this season. And uh, is, it, is it out yet? Oh, it was Lucas Torreira. Banging, mate. Brilliant stuff. I wish he played that well for Arsenal in real life. Brilliant. That's not something you see every day. But yes, that is where we're going to end this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a single video on this channel. Next episode will be a transfer special where we start the next season. 
and trust me you're not going to want to miss it hopefully we can get a big budget and you will find out about that in the next episode but until then once again thank you guys so much for watching welcome to the europa league with watford in the jürgen klopp challenge and i will see you all later